In today's episode, we're going to get a real solid bite into what makes the Element Max from Bluegrass Big Boar tick. This 50 caliber PCP air rifle is an absolute gem in my collection. Honestly, I know it's only a single shot and that's probably gonna, you know, X out a large portion of my audience. It's typically used to the magazine fed style stuff that we typically deal with, but there's something to be said for a single shot rifle, really training your skill set to choose your shot. With something that's innately as precision as the Element Max is right out of the box, I think that this is the kind of shooting cadence that's really going to benefit the hunter. Not only is this thing absolutely lightweight compared to everything else in my collection that I have as far as big bore air rifles are concerned, but it also brings to the table significant energy. I haven't had it across the crony yet and I don't want to take anybody else's word for it. But from what I'm looking at, it's looking between 350 and 450 foot pounds of energy potentially from this package in the 50 caliber 495 variety that we have. This is not a regulated rifle, so it's going to basically go ahead and peak and then peter down as far as the power is concerned as your pressure drops off. But I think that once we go ahead and really pattern where this rifle is going to end up at 50 yards throughout the field charge, the familiarity of experience is really going to give us a good sense of security when we go to take the shot in the field. Now there's a whole lot right going on with this rifle right out of the box. First thing I can absolutely say with certainty, like I said previously, this is by far the lightest thing in my entire cole uh, collection as far as big bore air guns are concerned. I don't have a scale in front of me, but I would say that this whole thing, including the scope, probably less than 10 to 12 pounds. I could heave this through the woods all day, no problem. Second thing you're going to really want to take a look at is this breech right here. This breech is going to go ahead and open up, but that does not cock the rifle. It's strictly a loading port. Once you load the seed, you lock it down, and then you would cock it back here with the hammer. I don't know how to decock it yet, so I'm not going to go ahead and do so for you boys. But you know what, once we get to the range and really invest some time in getting familiar with this rifle, I think that we're gonna really see some dividends at the 100 plus yard ranges. We have a Monstrum 6x24x50 Generation 2 scope on this, and this thing has proven so stout and so reliable on so many other high horsepower platforms on this channel that it just seemed like a good fit. I have one in tan, and I also have one in the black in front of you, and I thought that this black matched the whole getup of this rifle to a T. The only thing that I will say, as far as this rear tank is concerned, is the same thing that I'm starting to notice with every AEA rifle that I have that has a rear tank. The way that those two surfaces mate together between the rifle and the threads on this tank, for whatever reason in my collection, seems to be a consistent point of leaks. If I put rear stocks on my guns, they hold pressure. If I add a rear tank for any reason, they will go dry over time. Inside of that, if I fill the gun and then disconnect the rear tank, the rear tank does hold pressure and so does the gun. So I know that it's something in that interface as far as where these two pieces of the puzzle fit together that's just not quite right as far as the quality control is concerned. I've filled this rifle up to 4,000 PSI a couple of times and this is where it's actually currently sitting seems to get to about here and I notice it and then I top it up again because I need to film with it this weekend but it's something to be aware of I probably wouldn't have to deal with if I had a rear stock as opposed to a tank. The other thing you're really going to notice right out of the box with the Element Max is the level of refinement that's brought to the table. These extra scallops here, the extra machine work, the basic beauty that comes with this style of a trigger as opposed to that just click it forward style, this is good. Just the engineering to me personally that was put into this cross block safety really speaks to what AEA is trying to do as far as going forward in the big bore market. This muzzle brake did not come on this, but they are available easily from Jim at texomaprecisionpellets.com. Jim's stuff has been absolutely incredible, and I will be testing some brand new 50 caliber slugs from Jim in this rifle, but my main go-to has got to be those Lee 250s. Why Lee 250s? Because I own the mold. Also, it's been proven from multiple manufacturers to be highly effective. Lucky 7 Air Ammo, Jim and Texoma Precision Pellets, 
Air, American Air Ordnance, and a few others also utilize that uh, that same basic Lee double ringed 250 size mold. Some of them customize it, some of them size it, some of them do whatever they do to it. But that basic mold has been historically proven effective for hunters across the big bore range for years. I also like the idea of being able to take old fishing weights or old wheel weights, what have you, whatever the case may be, and turning them into ammunition if it got tight. I really like the level of attention to detail that was put into this build as well. Not only did we get a shroud around our barrel, but they also fixed the problem of not having a Picatinny rail in place of that dovetail that we saw on the Challenger Pro. This is an upgrade. All of my 45 Max stuff, all of my M50 stuff, everything like that, I had to go from dovetail to Picatinny. So the fact that we've got a Weaver rail, Picatinny rail on top of this rig already from the factory, that's gonna be an advantage getting this rifle into the fight. The other thing that I'm starting to notice about this guy out of the gate is this right here, this loading port appears to be ambidextrous. The same machined cutout that's on this side is also on this side. I'm not gonna fake it, like I know how to change that around, but it does look like the provision is there. A little bit different of a fill probe location, but that doesn't bother me at all. Every rifle is gonna be different, and this is pretty similar to a lot of the things that I've seen on the market. Some of them have it here, some of them have it here, some of them have it here. There's really no wrong place to put a fill probe. It's not like the gauge where if you put it on the end of the tank here, I'm looking down the barrel. All right, guys, once again, this did come from Thomas at Bluegrass Big Boar, and he's been absolutely instrumental in getting this channel the kind of traction that you guys have been seeing over the last couple of months. If you've been looking for a great spot to go ahead and pick up an Element Max for yourself, definitely do go check out Thomas at Bluegrass Big Boar pinned in the comments below. This would be a great place to go ahead and end this bench top review, but if you like this review, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you subscribe for more with that notifications button so you can stay current on the channel as well as when these videos come out. If you really like high horsepower, big bore reviews coming at you in a way that a lot of people just aren't putting it down, make sure you share it so that other people can see it. And I'll catch you boys in the next one.